say is the most cliche science question. How about, why is the sky blue? Now, we couldn't call ourselves a science show if we didn't tackle that question. And in fact, I thought it was such an important topic that I volunteered to do the story myself. Of course, that meant that I'd have to spend a couple of days out on this boat, in the sunshine, well, carefully examining the sky. But what I've discovered is that to understand why the sky is blue, you first have to know a little bit about sunlight and how it behaves when things get in its way. First of all, sunlight may appear to be one solid color, but it's not. It's really made up of many different colors that when mixed together produce white light. To prove it, let me show you an experiment that Sir Isaac Newton did more than 300 years ago. Take a glass prism, put it in front of a white light source, and presto, you can see all the individual colors that make up white light. What you're observing is the visible light spectrum, the light that our eyes can see. Now what separates these colors from each other is their wavelength. Light at the blue end of the spectrum has the shortest wavelength, and they get progressively longer as you move towards the red end. You also need to know that the shorter the wavelength, the easier the light can be deflected by objects that get in its way. So blue light is more easily deflected than any of the other colors. You can think of the sky as a giant pinball game. When sunlight collides with air molecules in the atmosphere, the short blue wavelengths get deflected or scattered in all different directions. Each time they change direction, blue light becomes visible to our eyes. This scattering fills the sky with blue light. The other colors are much less scattered, so they travel in a more direct path to the Earth. So the sky looks blue because blue light is being knocked around in the atmosphere a lot more than any of the other colors. But the sky isn't always blue, you say. What about all those beautiful sunsets? True, but the reason for all that color behind me lies in where the sun is located during a sunset, low on the horizon. During the day, the sun is located high above our heads. To reach us, the sunlight only has to pass through this much atmosphere, and only the blue light gets scattered. But during sunset, the sun's lower position means the light has to travel through a lot more atmosphere. More air molecules and dust particles to collide with means that now the other wavelengths of light are also being scattered. By the time the sunlight reaches our eyes, all that's left are the long wavelengths of orange and red light. So if the sky is blue because blue light is being scattered by air molecules, then what color would the sky be if there wasn't any air? Black. Space is black because there are no air molecules to scatter the sunlight. So the sky remains black. Now there is an actual reason for me being out on this boat doing this story. What color is the water out there? Blue, right? Okay. But if I scoop up a bucket of water, I'll see it's not blue, it's clear. Just like the water that would come out of your tap at home. So what's going on? Three things are happening. On the surface, water acts like a mirror. It reflects the blue from the sky into our eyes. But that's just on the surface. Down below, water acts just like the atmosphere. When sunlight collides with water molecules, it's the blue light that once again is scattered the most, so the water looks blue. In addition, water also absorbs red light, which further enhances the blueness of the water. The only catch is the light has to pass through several meters of water before this blue effect becomes noticeable. That's why the water in here is clear, not blue. So now you know that the reason the sky is 
blue is the same reason that large bodies of water are blue. Now, I just wonder if there's any other research I can do while I'm out here. It's kind of nice. Maybe whether uh, mosaic fusion uh, actually explains the universe.